This is magician Draven Thatcher, and he recently made a statement that Muslims can't be cursed or cast evil spells on them. According to him, the irregular practice of praying five times a day to Allah creates a spiritual shield that makes it impossible for negative energies to affect them, and this made a significant impact in Draven's life. Let's hear from his own words. The jinn and lesser demons can't even mess with Muslims if they're practicing correctly. Our attachment to energy kind of works like a cup, and if you're praying five times a day, this cup will be full. Worshiping a false god or calling them by the incorrect name is going to leave that gap, and it's going to allow something else to come in instead. And just going to church on Sunday is not enough to keep you protected, especially in modern day society. In case you don't know, Draven was born into a Christian family. Soon he began feeling strange negative things at home, which made him question his Christian beliefs. For example, he couldn't understand the father-son relationship between Jesus and God. Apart from the father-son idea, Draven had other mixed-up thoughts about religions in general. The variety of beliefs and practices across different faiths added to the complexity of his understanding. But he has always had respect for Islam and Muslims. Here is Draven explaining about what he knows about Allah. A lot of people aren't going to like this. The God of the Christian Bible is not Allah. Christians and Muslims do not follow the same God, and it's very fucking obvious. Now, the main reason why I noticed this was spiritual psychosis. Every Muslim I've met, every Muslim I've spoke to or learned from has been very clear-minded and level-headed. Even though they're very spiritual people and they hold their God to a very high level, they're still grounded, they're still down to earth. There's many Christian churches that you can walk in today and just see it filled with spiritual psychosis. Don't get me wrong, there's bad apples in every bunch and there's extremists all over the place. But whenever I look at Islam and the Muslim people, I see way less spiritual psychosis than I do in Christianity. And that's not even why I have such little respect for Christianity and a lot of respect for Islam. The major difference is whenever you're speaking to a Christian, they will just change the words in their book left and right. Do you remember when you were young and you would play games with other kids where there was always one child that would change the rules of the game just so they would stop losing? That is literally what it feels like to me every single day speaking with Christians. They just keep changing the words in their book, arguing, saying that's not the right translation or it's taken out of context. But if you look at Islam, the words in that book are solid. The Muslim people do not change the words in their book and they follow it to a T. Leaving Christianity, Draven became an atheist, but during his job at the nutrition store, he met a lady who introduced him to mystical rituals and black magic, including talking to demons and spirits. Draven even shared his experiences on TikTok, but this exploration led to negativity in his own home. Things changed when Draven met an exorcist who helped him control these spiritual forces, as he says. Later, according to him, he met a good spirit that transformed his journey. With this positive spirit's guidance, Draven found comfort and a new purpose, eventually leading him to Islam. Following the Quran and Islamic practices, he found that Islam is all about peace and love. Draven agrees with the fact that all of us are born Muslims. A lot of people today, and they can try to discredit the Quran all they want, but it doesn't work because we were all born Muslim. For Draven, saying Islam is evil is like claiming news channels always tell the truth, which we all know isn't accurate. According to him, Islam brings a sense of calm and caring into his life. It's not just about doing certain rituals. It's about finding peace, love, and in a deeper meaning in life. Islam played a crucial role in clearing his misconceptions about Hadrat Isa alayhi salam and the concept of Allah's father-son relationship. In Islam, Draven learned that Jesus was not the son of Allah, but a messenger sent to deliver Allah's message. So first of all, every messenger of God is a Muslim and was a Muslim. Now here's the big shocker for you, a lot of you guys. The Quran and Islam is based around the messages from God. Islam, according to Draven, clarified that messengers throughout history were sent by Allah and that their purpose was to spread the message of Islam. This insight provided Draven with a clear understanding of the role of messengers in connecting people 
with Allah's teachings. Moreover, Dravin asks people to support Gaza for humanity. Dravin thinks that right now, the least we can do is protest against Israeli products because it'll give Palestinians hope in the face of tragedy and show that people actually care for them. These scenes of support and solidarity will really restore their courage. Seeing people of all ages and from all communities descend on the streets will prove that their cries are not in vain. They are heard. The world is watching. And our fellow humans are standing up for them by opposing this war. Draven is actually surprised to see Jews protesting against Israel. This is Israel's nightmare. Their own people are now standing against them. But you won't see this on news channels, as these channels are controlled by Israel and America. Well, Draven thinks that these elites want normal people divided. According to him, he believes that they benefit when we're busy arguing and not paying attention to what they're doing. He believes that these elites purposely keep us divided so that we never join forces to understand how they might be messing up our lives. It's like they are distracting us with fights among ourselves so that we don't notice what they're up to. Even Draven faced a unique challenge in his journey as an influencer who supports Palestine. Draven was actually working with some Jewish investors known as Angel Investments. But when the investors saw Draven's videos about Palestine and Islam, they got angry. They wanted him to make content aligning with their beliefs. They even offered him a million dollars if he made such videos. However, Draven took a principled stand and refused their offer, resulting in the loss of all deals with these investors. Draven's decision to turn down such an amazing opportunity reflects a commitment to his own values and beliefs. When asked about his Shahada or why he hasn't openly declared himself as a Muslim, Draven shares that he has already taken the Shahada but is dealing with various challenges in his life before fully embracing Islam. All right, let me finally address this. I've actually already taken my Shahada a couple weeks ago. Now, before I break down and explain everything, I don't consider myself a Muslim. There is a few things in my life for the next year or two that I need to take care of first before I can take that step. Now, I only told a handful of people about this because I wanted to prove a point because so many people out here say that Islam and Muslims are angry and mean and judgmental. And without anybody knowing, about 95% of the community was just supportive. And some of you guys may remember, but I had Jewish investors. It was a seven-figure angel investment by a group of Jewish people that wanted me to say certain things. And when I explained to them the situation and they started seeing the videos about the Quran, they got pretty angry. It's ironic that they call themselves angel investors, but there is nothing angelic about their situation. And this is how I know when I tell you guys that all these influencers that are actually making money and living good, there's an investment team behind them. What's crazy about the situation is after I started supporting Palestine, they contacted me again. They came and offered me double the money if I deleted the post and supported Israel instead. Like, they tend to forget I'm from a fucking trailer park. My morals are not for sale. What I make monthly by myself without them already makes me feel like a millionaire, even though it's nowhere close to a million dollars. But that is an entirely different subject, and I'm not going to go into detail about that on this platform. But I took the Shahada because the Quran was the final missing piece. After everything I studied, there was always missing pieces. There was always gaps in the knowledge, no matter what religion I studied. But whenever I got around to studying Islam, it made everything make sense. It finally pulled everything together, pulled out all the holes, and filled the missing gaps. It was the first book that had the truth in it. But regardless of the situation, there's a couple things I need to take care of first. And on October 23rd and October 27th, Israel's got to an answer to a couple jinn. Draven acknowledges that he needs time to wrap up things in his life, dealing with personal struggles and demons, before making a public announcement about his faith. He expresses the need to make significant changes in his lifestyle as part of this process. For Draven, entering Islam is not just a simple declaration. It involves a personal journey of transformation. He emphasizes the importance of addressing ongoing challenges and making necessary adjustments in his life before fully embracing the principles of Islam. May Allah guide this brother and keep him steadfast and this beautiful Dean.